Yeah, oh, fantastic. That's better. Wow, you look amazing. I love your um, your necklace here. This is very yeah, yeah very nice. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. My colour is usually black or blinding. Black or blinding. <laughs> yeah, you've gone for both today. So, in the keeping in the theme of uh, animation, um, I, I read in your book that you were um, first inspired by Marine Boy. Um, I was first inspired by Transformers. So I thought I'd I'd wear this one for for our meeting. So. Amazing! I love it. Brilliant. It's uh, interesting to see what makes people tick, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, we're we're here today. Um, I'm in a different setting than normal. I'm actually um, I'm in the classroom right now. Um, I've got a couple of students with me who have um, one question each. Um, that if you don't mind, if you've got time, if we could save that till till the end. Sure. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Sorry for springing that on you. And, it's okay. And um, yeah, they're, they're good. They're good questions. Uh, you know, they're they're not outrageous. Uh, they they just want to know about um, animation, really, because I'm actually currently delivering um, animation to both level two and level three students at the moment. Um, so this is perfect timing to have somebody with so many honors and um, you know such a specialist in the field to come and and tell us all about it and especially focusing on um, B2B um, animation and, and how that works and how people can use that to their benefit. Uh, yeah, well, it's our pleasure. Thank, I mean, it's my pleasure. Thanks very much for having having me on board. And uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, I could tell you a little bit about the book. We've actually got a talk that we do give students if you want uh, me to do that at some point that, that okay. sort of covers all sorts of things like um, sort of the roles. There's so many different roles in animation. I think there's about 30. Um, you know, often people say, oh, I'd love to do animation, but I can't draw. And we say, well, you don't have to draw. You know, if you get physics, you can help with the software to create the whole physics in, in 3D. You can, uh, maths is really good for some of that software. You can um, do anything, accounting, marketing. There's also many jobs within animation that uh, doesn't mean you have to be the person doing the drawing as such. Um, and and often uh, it's uh, computers are used a lot. So um you know, hand drawing is is a skill that not even animators necessarily have because they use computers so much. Yeah, or perhaps um, even a digital tablet, or you know, they, you can correct things, can't you, with the yeah. technology? So yeah, definitely. Your little your little fella there is doing a little <laughs> dance in the background. Sal, yeah, Sal does a little <laughs> samba for you. <laughs> it's so good. So how did you uh, how did you come up with the name? Uh, it's an old nickname. Uh, so it's uh, uh, actually, uh, so I grew up in Portugal. Uh, I, I had a sort of trilingual education as a kid. I went to French school. And in, in Portuguese, Salamander is Salamandra. So um, it's just a really cool name. It was an old nickname. And yeah, just um, it sort of got used in the company. Uh, and people seem to really like it. I think it's because it's got lots of A's in it. It's got a very friendly sort of, I don't know, feel to it. Um, I think, I and think it's really nice it's um you know i wondered perhaps maybe somebody that you loved was called amanda or something like that and then you just fit it into salamandra well um, that's very clever of you actually it's my sister who died and her name was sandra and her name was in portuguese it's sandra salamandra and that was the nickname okay. so yeah well spotted <laughs> right so, so the company is actually named after her oh that that that's a lovely tribute um i'm, I'm sorry to hear about that um, so you you travelled around quite quite a lot. I noticed um, you know from your profile in the back of the book, um, you know you've been to New Zealand, and that's is that where you first came up with this idea? You were working in animation. Uh, well, actually, uh, so I started the first Salamandra company um, in South Africa. So I drove across Africa with an old boyfriend at the time. We zigzagged across and in a battered old combi, ended up in in South Africa, and then. Um, worked for a couple of companies and stuff and uh, had great fun down there. And then I saw there was a bit of a gap between uh, companies employing a uh, uh, sort of marketing design company and PR companies, and they weren't really talking together. So we created one that was both, uh, and that worked really well. And then we left. Um, I, I married a local, had children, um, absolutely loved being there. Johannesburg is just an amazing town, and, and South Africa is an amazing country. I really love my time there. But then we had the opportunity to go to New Zealand, 
and um, when I went there, uh, a friend of ours um, has got an animation firm and he does more sort of entertainment stuff, but produced some amazing stuff. So then when I came back to the UK, I thought, well, you know, there's definitely sort of, uh, you know, such an amazing medium. It's not being used very much in business. I saw one or two examples of it. Oh, my God. I've got to start, you know, Salamander UK and, and, and focus on that, which is what I did. And that was um, nearly eight years ago. And at the time, there was some B2B animation, but it wasn't that common. And some of it was really kind of templated, and not very sexy. And um, so we sort of dived in both feet. And now, of course, there, there are more and more uh, companies doing it, which is great. Um, is the, the pie is big enough for everybody. And, and there's, uh, you know, there's some really cool stuff. And I think, you know, for business um even really complex, sometimes really dry uh, topics, you can make it so cool. We call ourselves um, visual problem solvers. So we can create, whether it's static or animated, we can create all sorts of things, whether it's, you know, infographics or gif graphics or animated presentations or ads or, you know, your animated um, email signature, for example, or um, animated presentations or that get onto either virtual or real screens, multi-screens. And so there's so much that you can do in business and make it really um, fun and engaging but th the best thing is that you can get it's so content rich that there's so much that you can put into a short space of time and then it stays in your long-term memory because it's visual so from a, a business perspective or the best way to get your you know your message across and for people to go ah oh, that's what you got you guys do now I get it and also that's great for internal comments because often people um you know in fact we've had clients that say to us look we can't articulate what we do you know how are you guys going to do it and then you know they come back for the third or fourth iteration of yet another project because they see it works so well so it, it's a really wonderful tool and for us it's great fun because we work in about 18 industries so anything from you know kids storybooks to um aerospace work to gosh i don't know um it banking uh mom and pop catering it's really very very varied and every um business or industry has a, a certain challenge and they've got different audiences and so for us it's about understanding that and then getting that message across sorry i'm no no no, <laughs> that, that's, off on one. no that's perfect thank you so much and um as part of that with the um with the eight within the 18 different industries do you ever do um do you work collaboratively collaboratively with any sort of education institutions to sort of jazz up um the delivery of their units or modules or like, like a like an exam board like pearson or btac or anything like that yes uh, we have helped with the educational stuff and we want to do more of that because it's kind of great continuous work as well uh, and i think that um particularly if it's remote it's a great way to keep the uh, engagement as well and with that we can do all sorts of things we can mix up live film footage edit it up put you know motion graphics in and add then um uh animation to support what's being said so either whether it's green screened or we have had um uh clients give us you know like seven hours of footage and then we have to uh, cut that into sort of something that makes sense and into a set of interview questions stuff and then sometimes one particular case we had, um, uh, as I say, seven hours of footage and the people being interviewed in front of a dirty white wall and uh, some of them were wearing white shirts and, and some of them uh, had yeah. lovely, okay. lovely hair. So we had to hand cut all that out and then edit it and then put sort of fake backgrounds to make it look like it was a, like a busy, you know, um, work environment and stuff and like that. And then add yeah. animations to what they, they're saying. And it worked really well. I mean, for that particular client, they absolutely loved it. And for, for them, that project was was successful because of that um so we can repurpose existing footage um, and then but it's easier if we can take the the footage and, and in front of green screen and then we can do whatever you want behind but it's not always possible but we can we uh, can magic ra rabbits out of hats and has it been um has the COVID-19 pandemic posed like a particular difficulty for your company or because you're technology based has it has it not been a challenge um over the past couple of years well, it was uh, initially it was a challenge because we had to um, I had to set everybody up at home with their own kit. So obviously that's an expense of the business. Uh, we work on quite grunty machines, and then we had to make sure that we were quite lucky actually. We were extremely lucky because having these two studios, one in Eton, one in Dundee, we were already used to working um, collaboratively remotely, and we already had stuff in the cloud. So that was already kind of set. It was just about setting people up at home. And what we did find actually is that because um, we already had a really good um, team, uh, I should say, um, sort of rapport and sort of uh, very open communications and uh, just the way we work. 
that working from home, we actually ended up being more productive. Um, and it was, it was great. So we just wanted to make sure that everyone was okay, because some people live on their own. And, you know, sometimes it's, it can be quite isolating to be on your own. So um, uh, in, spe- in, in fact, speaking of uh, isolation, we did, we were asked to, to uh, work on a project, which was twofold, we did uh, the first one, which won a whole bunch of awards. And we've done another one, which is out to festivals now where we worked with a whole bunch of other studios and, and individual animators and created a piece where we were given I think it's 15 seconds each time and then we allocated to different um, animators too so they got tiny little portions and then put it all together um, uh, and well uh, Ruth did that and it was amazing it, so it gave you other opportunities to work collaboratively with other studios and other freelancers and stuff like that for fun I mean it was that was kind of a fun job but but that helps with the whole isolation because I think there was definitely for all of us you know that sort of cabin fever and sort of worry and and uh, all those kinds of things but I think having uh, we we already have uh, morning uh, stand-up meetings and uh, evening rushes every day just to sort of circle back to everybody and and, and sort of see where we are on different projects and, and share stuff that we've been doing and that's the best part seeing what's uh, what's been created so is, so is that similar to um similar to like a scrum you'd have like a, a morning scrum and then like a, a you know you do a sprint throughout the day and then see where everybody's up to at the end and then you can pick up again the next day is that how you kind of it? kind of that yeah i suppose it's just different terminology but um right. but yeah sort of it, the, the stand-up meetings are great uh, in the mornings because it just means that we can see what you know who's got capacity who hasn't you know who's working on what and make sure that we're taking all the boxes and um, the clients are getting stuff on time and what, you know, whether there's a particular deadlines and things like that, it just helps to keep everything unified really. And, 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 and then all day long, we're, we're constantly on Skype together or, um, you know, we've got different sort of groups, you know, we've got creative groups and then project groups and, you know, um, studio groups, or maybe it's, uh, um, what do you call it? Customer uh, communications and things like that. So, yeah. And you have um, you also you have the you have offices in three different locations. Uh, how did you end up having one in San Francisco? Well, that was um, uh, we really wanted to to kick off in uh, New York actually, uh, but an opportunity came up in San Francisco, and so we obviously grabbed it with both hands. We've already got clients in the states, and this is just a way to you know grow grow that market um, in, into you know different sort of geographical areas. But um, we've got clients um, kind of dotted around the world, and most of which you've never met, which is quite amazing really and this is even before uh, covid so um but now it's it's much more normal isn't it to, to yeah. deal with with people remotely and um uh and we're delighted that the clients love what we do so um and then you know give us more work which is uh, very exciting so for for that sort of thing how do you how do you go about um overseeing or managing um a company that's on like two different um time zones well, that that's not difficult. Um, I mean, we we had one project. Uh, we do some some of our work is under NDA, and this particular project, for example, is still under NDA. It's in, under NDA for perpetuity. It was for a, a massive blockbuster film franchise where we did uh, fifty six short animations in uh, four weeks, I think it was, and in four time zones. So it's a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> so we're kind of used to doing that. It's not ideal, but uh, the time zones aren't really an issue I mean San Francisco you know we have meetings in in the afternoon and it's their early morning so uh, that's kind of quite doable. Um, how many uh, how many projects would your company typically work on in in a year or gosh, in a, in a, would it be wow. hundreds or thousands? It depends on the size of the project some projects are much larger than others and take a lot longer um, some clients we might work on a project for a few months uh, and some we can you know, get out in a week or two. So it kind of depends on the size. I'd have to actually work out how many projects we do a year. I um, don't think I've got that down. <laughs> but it does ebb and flow. I mean, the one thing I would love to fix is the lumpiness of our work. So sometimes we have, you know, like a huge amount of work that comes in and it might go quiet. And when it goes quiet, we do internal stuff and then we have fun. We've just done a, a walk cycle thing where uh, everyone's done a sort of few seconds of, of a walk cycle and it's looking really cool. So we, we, then we share those on social media just to show our diversity and, you know, different sort of um, thinking and approaches and things like that. And that, that's quite fun. Do you, um, have you ever seen um, the Corridor Crew or do you know of the Corridor Crew? No. Oh, they're, no, what's that? They're like, um, they're like a famous um, or YouTube famous 
um, animation group who are based in California in America. And they, they always do like every week, they have two or three videos that come out and they show something that they're working on or they're debunking um, UFO foot, footage or something like that or oh. alien footage. So they'll say, oh no, that's, you know, that's animated. We know this technique, this is how you do it. And they'll go and reproduce it or they'll try and reproduce um, like uh, the T-Rex scene from Jurassic Park, you know, the famous one where it first comes on and it's destroying the car. And they're, see, they're trying to see if they can make, uh, make the animation as good as the practical effects uh, with today's animation technology. If you, you haven't seen those guys. Oh. No, I haven't. But what I have seen is uh, some complete loony uh, people who I don't even know who did it, but they've done Jurassic Park, but they've added pink high heel shoes to all the dinosaurs with the sound effects. So whenever they're running around, they've got these high heel shoes. It is the funniest thing you've ever seen. And <laughs> I'll check that out. I'll, um... You must with all the sort of uh, clanking of, of, the, of the heels as well, which makes it even funnier. You can't take it seriously. But the hours it must have taken to do it, honestly. Uh, so I can't remember who actually did that, but it's worth looking up. But I will look up the cor uh, corridor crew. I don't know about them. Yeah, maybe I'll... my 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 guys do, but uh, guys and girls. But uh, I don't. How many people do you have working for you? I think we're sixteen at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so Seven, sixteen or seventeen. Yeah. Across all three sites, so it's not like um, in in my mind when I was thinking about it, like to see the output from your company. I think like there must be hundreds of people, if not a thousand people working on everything that you do. It's amazing to have like such a, a like a tight team to produce such high quality. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, we do punch above our weight, I have to say, and we are very agile. So um, yeah. we've had clients in the past saying, oh, you know, what, what's your uh, rate card? And I said, well, we don't work on rate cards because, it, you know, you'd be you would not be comparing apples with apples. Uh, we work on projects because we're so much faster. So we get stuff out, we get it out first time, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, you know, there's a bit back and forth, but uh, yeah, I, I must admit my team is is very um, agile and can, you know, I think what we're really good at as well is, is ideation. So um, we, we ask lots of pertinent questions at the beginning of a project and, and then do sort of desktop research on that industry and competitors and who the target audience is, blah, 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 so that we kind of have a better understanding. And then we really, we have to understand the product or the service before we do a narrative. So mm. it's really imperative that we get that. And then we can ha have some ideation on how to represent that, how to do the transitions, how, what to, you know, um, illustrate, etc. But I think um, our team is really good at doing that. Um, so, and ideas can come from any, any uh, you know, source, which is great. So do you work in um, specific phases, like a, like a project life cycle or an animation life cycle? Um, is that what you promote in your book? Is that the, you know, the, the pathway that the lizard follows on, on the yes, book? Yes, so, so on the book, a copy of which I have here. <laughs> so yeah, destination, destination animation. Uh, and in fact, it's how smart marketeers convey complex messages memorably. The reason I actually wrote the book is that I had so many people asking me whether it's, you know, clients or friends or, you know, colleagues saying, well, but, you know, how do you do it? You know, what's, what's behind it? How do you know what's in my head? How do you know that? How, do, how does the whole thing work and it, it feel it felt like it was a, sort of such a mystery so what we've done is we already had this implemented in the way we did the the, the how we service our clients so to speak so it's basically the the, the book goes through it's, it's done a little bit like an underground map it shows you yeah, where, where you go and what happens at each stage so it shows you for example you know there'll be the briefing process and then there'll be we'll create a mood board for a client and every stage a client will sign off so it's a very collaborative process and it's there's um, the client is involved all the way through um, if there's any tweaks or any changes or whatever, but we go in one linear direction. So uh, to keep within the budget and the timelines, if we have to change anything further down the line and we explain it to the client as well, we can do it, but it won't be the same budget, won't be the same timeline because it yeah. takes so yeah. much more to go back and change things and what have you. So there's a whole sort of process. The book takes you through what that process is how it works um and f you know for your students it's it's great to understand as well because b2b animation is quite different from uh, industry um entertainment animation which is using different platforms different timelines and and different outcomes really because you've got a shorter message uh, potentially but it has to be quite rich and you, you've got to have some kind of call to action even if it's just to understand the brand or understand the product um but 
you know, there, there's, you know, that every marketing budget is finite and there, there needs to be some kind of return on investment. So whereas in entertainment, the investment, return on investment is, is enjoyment and, and so, you know, evangelizing about it for a, a B2B a piece of animation, it's more about, you know, did it, is it fit for purpose? Did it explain that complex message? Did people get what it's all about? Did, can they share it online? Is it, you know, um, did the call to action work in that call to action could be, I don't know, sign up to a newsletter or go to our website or, um, you know, or maybe it's somebody's presenting it to you to ask the right questions, etc. It's such a malleable piece. You can use it in so many different ways for business. Um, and that's why I love it because we always encourage our clients to repurpose what we create for them and use it in lots of different ways, you know, extract little elements they can use on social media or yeah. maybe put on that on a sort of electronic white paper. You know, there's lots of different ways or we can extract still assets that can be put onto print for example so that everything you know uh, echoes the same sort of messages yeah that was going to be my next question so um you know do you give them like a, a style guide or something you know to go yeah. on with it things that they can use yes. with their with their products yeah well the style guide helps with that with uh, how we fashion the, the animation um if it's it to be used for something else we can do um uh, uh, uh brand guidelines for clients um and we can either police them if they exist or we can create them for them as well because we've got a very strong uh, design um, background as a team so uh, that can be done in-house as well which is quite nice. And do you um, do you do some of the designing and animation yourself? Is that part of your background? Me? Yeah. Me? No. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm a big evangelist and I love, I love cartoons, I love uh, animation and I love uh, anything. I'm marketing litmus paper so I absolutely love TV adverts, um, printed adverts. I'm just I absorb it all, and I just really enjoy the creativity around it. But no, I'm 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 the one of the sort of business hat on, I suppose. And uh, um, but uh, I'm very very lucky to have an amazing team um, of uh, uh, chaps and chapettes who are, are very good at what what they do. <laughs> um, so what was uh, I I I just noticed. Um, I'm going to edit this bit out. Sorry. I just noticed I've gone completely off piece and I've for forgot the questions that, that you sent me. Oh, um, it's okay. Well, I don't mind. I don't mind. don't mind. No, okay. no, no. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, so I don't know. Where do you want to go from here? Like, do you want to talk more about the book? Uh, I can do. Um, uh, is, um, is it the or, three Ps? Um, that, that might yeah, be nice to cover. Yeah. Let me just uh, get the, the intro out. Um, the other thing as well to cover maybe is that, that uh, so the, the different aspects that we work in. So we do, you know, 2D, 3D, uh, we do AR, VR yeah. as well. So yeah, um, I, I wanted to ask you, do you do, you do anything with um, claymation or anything like that or plasticine? Um, you know, we, or, we have or, for fun, but we haven't done it for clients because that's quite an expensive um, yeah, uh, and, it, yeah. you know, it's normally it needs a big budget. We've done it, as I say, for fun and we've done sort of Christmas cards are then, you know, with the uh, stop motion and things like that. But um, to actually do it, uh, we've, I think we've done one project. It, it, usually it's the budget doesn't sort of lend itself to that and, and timelines and stuff, because it, it does take, it requires time. And uh, so um, um, on, on your website, I noticed that you have like hundreds of different awards and accolades from all across the world. Um, do you, some of them were for like short films and or short animations um is that something that you venture into as well as the b2b stuff yes we do for for our creativity it's, it's really important i i feel to keep everyone um sort of their creativity fed um so and to push themselves and to do something that's not necessarily client-based so yeah we do we do uh create shorts for ourselves and then we enter them for um uh, competitions and um what's really lovely is that we win awards for business and for creativity which is quite nice it shows that you know we can wear both hats uh, do you, well do you have um somewhere online that um people can see some of those uh, award-winning shorts uh yes i think a lot of our work is on the website you can look under uh work but there's also a set of case studies um that's under i think it's under news um and you can have a look at all our pretty much a lot of our stuff's on there. Um, I, I noticed actually on the, on the news page that you had, um, you were like being a ballerina. <laughs> there was like, was there, there was all, <laughs> doing this thing. What, what was that? That was a charity, a charity thing that, it, the great thing about Salamander team is that everyone's always up for stuff. It's really cool. Yeah. So that was, um, 
It was a charity a ballet lesson um, that was raising money uh, locally. And uh, so I, I asked uh, everybody, would they be keen to, to you know, uh, the company would uh, donate, but then, you know, we'd all have to sort of dress up. And so, uh, you know, I was really surprised. All the guys are really keen. It was <laughs> amazing. And then so we got, we got our color, um, uh, brand color tutus and, and we had sort of fishnet um, gloves and, and uh, ankle uh, warmers and, and all these silly colored beads and stuff like that. And honestly, the, what we don't have on there is the video work. It's absolutely hilarious actually watching people doing, you know, prancing across the, you know, the hall and everything. It was so funny. And I, I was just couldn't believe that the guys are so up for it. Um, it was really cool. We've done all sorts of things. We did um, a sleep out night uh, for, uh, so we support two homeless charities, one in Windsor and one in um, Dundee. And the, the Windsor is a uh, Windsor Homeless Project and they do a sleep out every night. And, and we did that uh, the, the year that it, it snowed and rained and everything else. And it was quite a bonding exercise actually. And it made us feel incredibly grateful for everything that you know we've got and take for granted day to day. Uh, because it was a really, it was, it felt very vulnerable, uh, even though we were in a sort of a, a safe environment, really. Um, it, it just, you know, it's sort of three o'clock in the morning, you hear people kicking a tin down the road, and, and they're obviously you know, quite plastered. And you think, gosh, if you're on your own, sleeping rough, you'd have no protection. And these yeah. people could just come and, you know, be awful. And so things like that was quite cool and we've done all sorts of other things we we try and do um so before covid we used to have wellness wednesdays over summer where uh, we'd stop early and then go and do something together and then each office would have different things allocated to do whether it be kayaking or uh, boating or maybe go to a museum or whatever or walk around some um uh, ruins things like that just to or go to a gin distillery all sorts of things like that just to get you out and be doing something either outside or something creative. We've done paint, uh, pottery painting and um, all sorts of things like that, just to to do something different. For now, we do um, we do yoga every other week and we do coffee catch ups the other week where we can't talk about work, which is surprisingly hard to do. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine, especially if you're you know you're with you're with these people all the time. They're like your family at work, and then you there might be something pressing, something that they want to talk about and they can't. Yeah, I, I can imagine that, that that's quite quite tricky. Um, yeah, quite we have a, we, we have a gin distillery local to us here in Kings Lynn. So, you know, if you ever fancy uh, a road trip out and um, sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's also um, I, my, my wife and I went to uh, an amazing one a couple of years ago at the uh, Lakeside Distillery in the Lake District. Have you been there? Ooh, no. Wow. They do. They do an amazing tour of the whole distillery. Um, and then at the end. At the end, they have like a tasting session. And um, so you sit in this beautiful uh, bar um, and this woman just, she just kept coming and bringing vodka after flavored vodka and gin and wow. just uh, more, you know, too, too much really. But when you have to drive there to a place, you know, you have to go, oh, and, wow. have to go, have to go and rest it out and, and sit it out while uh, everybody else was there having fun um, and get, getting blasted. That was yeah. um that was uh, 2018, yeah, around about New Year's. I uh, went on a UK tour with some friends from Spain and uh, went, went by there. So I highly recommend the... Oh, like, that sounds the amazing. Room. Yeah. My, my, my husband and I went to uh, Bombay Sapphire Distillery. Oh, wow. And that was absolutely fascinating. It was just before Christmas as well. So everything was done up. The Christmas trees are decorated with little miniatures of the, of the Bombay uh, gin, um, Sapphire Gin everywhere. But uh, we also had... Um, they also taught us all sorts of uh, all the flavors and made you smell things and um, mm. all the different botanicals they put in it. And then where where they are, this river goes round the actual um, uh, the city itself, and it's all glass. It's um, it's a beautiful building, and um, the actual original building there was where apparently uh, they used to, it was a paper mill, and it's where they used to make all the British money. And then they used to also make the there's one. Uh, building that's called um, India House and it's not because of Bombay uh, Sapphire it's because they used to make all the rupees for India so they used to make the money for uh, the, you know the old um, I wonder like outposts you know in a place like that there must be a floorboard somewhere or like a, a brick, <laughs> you know, and, nice. yeah, just, just beneath it and you know there's there's a whole stash of ancient <laughs> cash there ready to be grabbed 
uh, wouldn't have much uh, use now that you'll be able to, to um, use in a bank. But yeah, w- w- amazing um, history. But yeah, the, the, similar to you, that we also had these tasting things and it was quite delicious. Mm. So is, is that your tipple? Uh, one of them. I'm, I'm, you know, I do like gin and tonic, I must say. Uh, but now they've got so many different gins, so many different to- yeah. tonics. It's actually quite uh, lovely. I, I like, um, <laughs> we're totally off topic. Um, is it Sip Smith's? The, the one oh, yes. The, yeah, I love that one. That's Don't great. they do a chocolate orange one or something? I'm An not orangey sure. one or something. It's a great name though, isn't it? Yeah. Sip Smith. And um, have you ever had it with a, with a cucumber slice? Yes, that's really nice. I that's really like favorite. that. That's my favourite. Yeah. yeah, I That's love that. Really nice. anyway. so I love I love Pims. So Pims has got lots of cucumber and things like that as well. Um, that in you add in. Yeah. So I haven't really um, since, since the lockdown. Haven't really been out to enjoy you know like a festival or anywhere where you would go and um, have Pims or anything like that. I used to live up in um, in Lytham. Um, do you know Lytham uh, between Preston and Blackburn? I I do know of it. A friend yeah. of mine from university went uh, lived there. Yeah. And, um, Isn't that, there a, a lovely golf course there? Yeah, a uh, world famous one. Yeah, I've you actually. Lytham St. Anne's or something, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Lytham St. Anne's, and then Lytham is like a very small um, sort of village uh, just off off the uh, you know to more towards Preston um, on the side of Lytham St. Anne's, and there's um, there's two very prestigious uh, golf courses there, um, and I actually on on a day out I've seen. Um, Will Smith and I've seen Tom Cruise driving a, an anti vehicle. Yeah, they all go there for this uh, for the Lytham Open. Um, and the people, oh. who, the people who live there, a friend of mine had. Um, he's got he's got a large house. Um, him and his partner, um, or his husband, uh, live there, and they've got this large house. So they go and go on holiday, and then they rent the house out to the stars. Wow. Uh, yeah. So the the because all the houses in Lytham, they're like mansions. They're massive. Um, or like huge, like old um, detached or semi-detached houses. So they just go there, they rent out the whole town, they go to the, the golf um, golf tournament and you, you see them around. I think George Clooney was there at the same time. But oh my I, word. I, can't, I distinctly um, remember seeing Tom Cruise because he was driving an antique car, you know, like a really old, uh, you know, like a sort of one of the very first cars uh, with a... <laughs> Did you have the goggles? Yeah, yeah, with the goggles and everything <laughs> like that. Um, so yeah, um, that was uh, how long ago was that? Like 2017, something like that. Yeah, 2017, a couple of years ago. That's amazing. Yeah. It's a uh, uh, so we used to live in Old Windsor, which is just down the road from Windsor, and um, uh, we were sort of neighbours to Elton John. Not really right. neighbours. I mean, you're just in the area. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and he has his white tiara party, and then when that's on. All the locals, there's a particular pub, you all sort of have your, you know, your drinks watching all these stars going past. It's really funny. Some of them wave, and some of them don't. And it's Did you ever manage to get in, get in with them? Or? Uh, I did actually walk up because I had a, a Brazilian guest coming uh, to stay with us. And I, I walked up with her to see how close we could get. But the, the security were mm. absolutely full on, you know. Um, we, we would try to blag our way to just to stand there. But they, they weren't, weren't very happy with us being anywhere near it. So Do quite you- interesting there. Did you happen to see um, Rocket Man? You know the movie. Um, about oh, it. I love that movie. It was so good, it was so wild. good. Absolutely wild times. If if any of that is sort of accurate or similar, I'm, I'm sure, sure it is. is. I'm yeah. sure it is. But did you know that you know his partner helped to put that all together? And then Elton John watched it for the first time in the premiere, and he was obviously quite choked up about the whole thing because he yeah. hadn't anything to do with it. So can you imagine how that, what that must feel to? It, to watch feel, your life unfold in front of you. Yeah, it'd feel vulnerable, wouldn't it? You know, to sort of, to see people playing your life, playing you as a child on screen. So odd. Yeah. It was good, though. He did a great job. It was job. fantastic. So, yeah, I agree. Agree. 100%. It was it's a fantastic movie. So, um, speaking of movies, um, do you have any plans to do any longer animated movies, like perhaps for children or anything like that, get into that sort of industry? We'd love to. We'd love to. We've done uh, some uh, shorter uh, ones for children where we've, we've been award winning in that as well, which is fantastic. So we've either um, illustrated children's books and then in 3D and then animated them, or we've been given the uh, the books that are ready at illustrated and turn them into animation. So we could do either, either, either way. Uh, we'd love to do more of that because it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, everything from, you know, the music that's picked and the sound effects and the, you know, voiceovers and stuff is, is really cool. 
for, for the for the children's books where you do the animation um do you do anything with um augmented reality i know you mentioned ar and vr before mm. um, but i had an idea about um children's books and cooking books where you you know you have the um you have the children's book and then you have an app and then you would open up the app and you hold it over uh, a section or a page on the children's book and then those characters would come to life in the augmented reality do you do yeah anything? that's absolutely doable yes we've done yeah. we've done uh, that sort of thing with augmented reality we do it more and more actually and business is really um a great um avenue for augmented reality because you know whether it's um, an advert or you can you can anchor an, uh, an image to um to the piece as well or a uh, qr code and nowadays we're also yeah. used to qr codes it used to be very old hat before but now it's kind of back in fashion um and and yeah to do that we've done that with uh, catalogs for business where you know it'll pop out and it's you know maybe it's a drill and it'll you know explode out and you can see the workings and things like that but for children's books it would be a doddle because you could do whatever you want whether whether it's showing how something gets done like breaking an egg or you know mixing it up or something yeah. it'd be quite and the thing is you could see it from every perspective we did um in the pharmaceutical industry we did a it's under NDA, so I can't tell you too much, but for a big pharmaceutical, UK pharmaceutical. And uh, um, it was a, an AR project that we did that actually was just started off in the UK. Um, and then it was so successful that it went into EMEA and then into Australasia and then sort of globally. And it was really to help um, because of COVID, you know, the reps couldn't really be in front of clinicians. So it's a way of uh, from their tablets or their phones to be able to um, anchor something in their space walk around it and have it unfold can't really give you too many details yeah. but it looked amazing we had to localize it for every region as well to make it appropriate for that region and um and that worked really really well and it was very emotive as well because it was about um childhood disease and it really really brought the message home and it was so successful on so many levels on a sort of scientific level on a sort of practical uh, uh, and a sort of a medicine level and obviously the emotional level etc so i think it's it's a fantastic tool um and we, we work in ar and vr vr is a, a much longer burn and it's usually much bigger uh, budgets but ar is, is much more affordable than it used to be um and we can turn things around quite quickly whether it's you know a, an advert that comes up at you or from the screen and what's quite cool now is that not only can it come out but you can actually go inside and look inside like an adult's house see what's going on inside it's really cool and so can you, can you um then uh perhaps if you have like the right sensors you could move some of those uh artifacts around within the animation with the inside one it, potentially we haven't tried that one yet but the outside one yes you can uh, more, be more interactive and have things happen um you know click on things to see things happen the, um, the the closest I got to something like that was um, in 2016. I was um, working um, at a Star Trek exhibition, and I was the the general. Wow! Manager. And we had um, we we had a a, tel a teleporter, you know, a transporter like in Star Trek. So we had the whole oh God. thing, but the whole background was it was working like a QR code. So it had a, a symbol that was broken up, and when somebody stood on it, um, if they held their phone over it. It did the, the, the oh wow the, yeah it recorded a very short um video image of them disappearing and teleporting <laughs> so I that love was it. Really cool yeah that, that was nice but we um we love like um ar and vr around here um in in the college and one of my colleagues today he was um uh, playing around with my phone and he i've got uh i've got a samsung so it's a bit more flexible and he, he activated the dev kit on there or the developer mode and then he, he had an image and it, same thing just hovered the camera over the image and it, it activated and you could see the the 3d world that was created in unreal i think it's uh, it's amazing do you um... it, it is really cool one thing that we do uh, as well which is is working really well for businesses if um clients have got sort of a, a hybrid or a totally um virtual or um uh, even in real life we can create um so we did a bit of trickery in one of, uh, so we run a couple of meetup groups. One is for the pharmaceutical industry and one's for the tech and SaaS industry. And what we did was, um, so I was presenting and then I did a bit of a trickery. I sort of, you know, disappeared like that, you know, suddenly and, and then appeared on, on this virtual screen, which we had pre-recorded me wearing the same kit. And, yeah. and then on that screen, there's all this bonkers stuff going on. There's Sal coming up on the stage and there's, you know, graphs coming down and all sorts of things unfurling while I'm talking to show 
all the things that you can do. And of course, you can go into infinity and, and you can do whatever you like. And one kind of thing, they go, oh my God, how did you do that? And it's just, you know, it's, it's, you know, fun trickery that we can do, but then it can be used in so many different ways. Like your lectures, for example, you could yeah. be on a, a bonkers stage with all sorts of things going on around you, you know, and then sort of appear back onto your Zoom and, and carry on as normal. Um, and it's just a, a way of... Uh, It'll be you know, so, so much more captivating and, and interactive than yeah. you know, just me reading from a script here or just, you know, <laughs> reading a book or trying to get people to concentrate. Um, but yeah, yeah, it'd be so much For better. Teaching, what you're saying about teaching, um, you know, whether it's, I mean, we're, we've all got such short attention spans now, haven't we? Adults, kids, it really doesn't matter. We, we now, we just got, we get too bored too quickly. So um, for any kind of educational stuff, you know, any kind of animation, even if it's just animating your slides, we, we do, um, one of the talks that we do actually, uh, it's called Motion and Emotion. The whole thing is, is on a, a PowerPoint platform, but everything on top is, created by us and it feels like you're watching a film because although i'm clicking stuff as far as you're seeing it's you know it's like a it's like sal here it's yeah. it, it's kind of seamless um and then but but it's clickable so i can sort of go at my pace and and change things or whatever and that's i think the way forward for any kind of presentation or education is to to make it um more like an mgm feel rather than you know sort of the, the what is it the the powerpoints that you know, sort of whizzes out and whizzes back yeah, in, and it's, yeah. <laughs> I know, it's a bit sort of passe. Yeah, a bit, a bit old hat. I think, um, I think Microsoft and PowerPoint they had um, they had a bit of competition coming through from new developers. Like um, I can't remember the name. Uh, oh, what's the name? I've lost it. Um, but there I was. I think I know uh, what you mean. I can't remember the name either. That must be. Uh, that's not good. They need your the afternoon. They need your help. <laughs> make them memorable yeah 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 so um you say do you do um you you have a blend of animation and advertising would you how would you define your company how, are you an advertising company are you we're, we're, we're content creators uh animation firm and and we also um kind of brand design as well so because we've got really good understanding and and some you know very very solid basics in that uh so people who've been graphic designers and and brand uh folk who wanted to do animation. What we do at Salamander is we allow people to, I always ask people, what do you want to do in the ideal world? What would be your perfect job? Um, even if it's not with us, we'll try and shape you so that you can go in that direction. Cause I, you know, I try and follow Richard Branson's uh, mantra that, you know, what is it to uh, uh, train people up so they can leave you, but treat them so they don't want to or something along yeah, those lines. That, that's, um, that is it verbatim, like you've got it. Is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> He, that's, he, uh, that's what we try also, and do he also said um whenever somebody offers you something say yes um which you know i'm glad that that you said yes to me and that you found time uh to, to come on and, and talk to me um you know and that when i took that approach i i went on a on a mad uh year that that took me to uh, malta and north africa like pursuing all sorts of different little business interests and yeah. it was just having that that change in attitude to think well, whatever the risk is, I'm just going to go for it. Um, and yeah, it's uh, you know it's awesome to uh, to have that. So yeah, he's a he's a good mentor. So, he is. He is. I mean, he had quite an interesting upbringing, didn't he? And at one point, his mother um, dropped him off miles away from home and said, "Find your own way home." <laughs> and he was really young. He was like I don't know, seven or eight or something, wow. and had to go across fields and everything. I don't know. That was to teach him independence or something. But it's a bit harsh. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine doing that today? No, as a mother, I, I couldn't do that, but, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm all for uh, taking risks. I mean, one of my mantras is gamble, gamble. You know, you've got to sometimes gamble. You can't, yeah. you can't stay in the safe lane all the time. you got to, uh, you know, within so, reason. Um, if, like, say, for, say for example, um, a student wanted to start out in animation and they approached your company, um, what sort of um, starting roles or positions do you have within your your company? That um, do you do you take on graduates, or do people need to have a degree to to start within animation, or they, do they just need a good portfolio? Uh, they do need a good portfolio, and and we we do look for um, animators who can do vector animation rather than hand drawn. And okay. uh, sadly, what we find is a lot of um, youngsters coming out of college or uni. Uh, have really done mainly hand-drawn stuff and from a commercial perspective we can't use that because uh, clients 
always love tweaking and changing things. Yeah, and if you hand draw an animation, mm. you've got to start again if uh, you know yeah. need any changes. So we unfortunately, we, although we occasionally, very occasionally, do hand drawn stuff, um, it's very rare. Uh, so we look for uh, students uh, or youngsters or graduates who um, have got vector animation. They've uh, um, shown an interest in 2D and or 3D or both. Um, and can work. We use uh, Blender actually. Blender's great. Um, and and for youngsters, there's so much stuff on on the internet. So many tutorials, and you know, and a lot of big movies are getting made on on Blender now. So it's definitely punching uh, next to you know other softwares. Yeah, and there, there's loads of um, there's loads of software and tutorials that they can get access to for free um, mm. from uh, Autodesk. Um, you know, if you're in education, you have an education email. You can access all of their entire suite, yeah. which costs thousands of pounds for completely free. So yeah, yeah, they should. And and I think Unreal um, and um, they, I think they also have uh, students who can benefit from a lot of free software. Unfortunately, it kind of changes the minute they start working, but uh, <laughs> but at least it's a great way to to build your knowledge. I, I think my advice would be experiment, try different stuff, especially if it's free. Give a give it a go. I really love to see people who. Um, do a try stuff um, because it, in our team we're always tr we are always trying new stuff even if somebody's particularly strong say as a 2D animator but we'll give them some 3D work maybe it might be some internal work just to practice on and then see how that goes and then sort of expand their knowledge and eventually put them on to um, client work but back to your question about you know the kind of people we take on we used to sort of do a lot more um, uh, work experience and uh, apprenticeships and things like that. But we've kind of steered away from that now due to COVID and the fact that we don't have the manpower to really uh, support um, that level right now. But I do believe in it. And I'm, I'm sure once we get a bit bigger, we'll go back to that. And I was on a couple of boards to help with the apprenticeship levels four and seven to you know get the whole um, amex. I do believe in that. And I believe in giving back. And we've spoken to loads of schools. I've spoken at... Um, you know, obviously various Zoom things. And uh, I think it's really important to encourage youngsters into the industry. Um, and as I say, there is a talk that we run that, that talks more into sort of um, the roles and, and what we, we look for. That the biggest change, I think, for any student going to commerce is the timelines where they might have at university or college, they might have like a term to do something. Yeah. With us, they might have a week if they're lucky. So it's that change, which is really, really hard, I think, uh, where you think you can you've got all the time in the world and sometimes you've got to present something that is imperfect um, and that's just life unfortunately we don't always have time to absolutely perfect it we do it as best we can within the budget within the timeline to make sure it's still a, a lovely piece but it wouldn't be something that you could go back and redo a million times as you probably would have the luxury to do when you're studying but in commerce you don't have that luxury so you've got to learn to be quicker and and more um cutthroat with their own creativity in a sense and sometimes it, yeah. the other thing is that sometimes it hurts if you because it comes from the heart and then you know client might say and that's where we try and buffer what a uh, studio hears or client says because they might go oh no that, that's not what i wanted and yeah, yeah. you know have uh, you and so um perhaps students need to build up their own um, resistance and not become too precious about their their work or the thing that they create as well I think, what do you think? They need to yeah. be resilient. To I think so. I mean, you can do that with your friends and colleagues, can't you? You can just um, uh, critique each other's work yeah. uh, in, in, a, in a sort of um, uh, collaborative and, you know, um, uplifting way uh, so that you can carry on better. You can get really into something and then A, not see the big picture or not see that you've done, you've really spent a lot of time on this bit, but there's all these other bits that you have to do. And then that's really polished and the rest of it isn't. And then, it's really obvious. So you've got to see the big picture, chunk it up, time yourself, you know, and then make sure that you allocate in the stop. If you've got up to that timer, stop and then move on to the next bit. And if you've got time at the end, go back. But um, what's, you know, as a creative, it's very hard, isn't it, to, to pull away from that deep it, focus. It, it certainly can be. And um, for, your, for your team, do they manage their own time uh, on certain things? That, do they have to do that chunking themselves or is that something that is prescribed? Um, by like a, a bit of both it depends how, how um, uh, senior or junior uh, they are but we, we do sort of support people with sort of suggesting stuff but normally it's really up to the individual uh, but they, they will have so we work on uh, uh, software that times 
things so we know how much time is allocated to job and then okay. time to that um i mean we're not you know super super absolutely to the minute but it's just to keep it within so that we can keep it on budget otherwise it can just run away with you um do, do you ever have a situation where um it's like all hands to you know all hands on deck like yeah and absolutely we've had we've had so normally for a, for a 60 second animation for all the elements um including the e-client management stuff like that we work on we prefer to work on a sort of four to six week uh period but we've had jobs that have come in and they've only got a week so then we've thrown everybody at it yeah. and then it's it's a question of making sure that the um style sheet is really adhered to so that even though it's different people's work that they on, on a longer project like something like a pepper pig or something it's easy to do because it, you've got the time and you can understand the you know the guidelines etc but on something so short where you've got a week to do it you really got to keep checking what everyone else is doing to make sure that you're aligned and that the thing looks like one cohesive piece um but it's it's good ex exercise to do once in a while but for your nerves it's not something yeah, you want yeah. to do that often <laughs> um so how are you doing for time are you are you okay to to take some questions uh yeah that should be fine yeah okay i'll just get them for you okay you're okay. right so this is uh harry he's one hello. of our level two students hello harry how are you doing i'm doing good and you good thanks yeah so what's your question uh, Christine, oh. you've been very successful in your business life. What tips would you give to young people who aspire to become uh, um, animators? Uh, well, I guess it's a, it's all about passion. So if you've got a passion for something, it makes it makes all the hard work much easier because you can s kind of see where where you want to get to. Have an idea what you want to do. Um, so do you want to go the uh, entertainment route, like the Pixar, the Disney, that kind of stuff? So that's a longer burn. It's a bigger team. You might get to work on a couple of minutes over two years uh, rather than a commercial environment where you might work on a whole piece. Uh, you'll see it from beginning to end, but it's a much faster turnaround. So you kind of try and think of, or maybe you want to go into gaming um, and, and you've got, you know, do you want to do character design? Do you want to do backgrounds do you want to do still animated you know do you want to do light do you want to specialize in something for, for a company like ours we want generalists we want people who'll do a bit of everything and who'll learn a bit of everything uh, but if you want to really specialize in, in in you know for example rigging or lighting or something like that then i would recommend sort of a, a larger agency or one that does you know bigger projects yeah, thank you for that brilliant no worries and uh, this is richard <laughs> hello richard hello what was the most popular children's book collaboration that your team's worked on? Um, well, there's two that spring to mind. One is the Dougie and Daisy series. There's five five books that we uh, put together. And the other one is the Teeny Tots um, animation that we took from an existing book with um, existing illustrations. Um, and both won awards. Uh, the Teeny Tots actually won quite a few awards, which is quite nice. But uh, that, that's, uh, I guess, our two favourites. Yeah, thank you <laughs> pleasure <laughs> thanks very much for for doing that for them um so yeah, um if you, you want to talk about anything else um or do you have any messages that you would like to put out there for um potential clients or anything like oh that? yes i mean if there's anybody out there who needs uh, uh visual problem solvers who can work on uh, uh 2d 3d ar vr and uh, give you some uh, award-winning work uh, we'd love to hear from you and if you want to uh, have a look at the book um, it's available on Amazon or Kindle uh, so it's uh, Destination Animation by Christine McKay um, and hopefully that's useful because it's it's really about demystifying and looking under the bonnet of animation for business and and what that's all about it's really to help marketeers to you know decide what kind of style to go for there's quite a lot of thinking that goes into uh, commissioning and animation for business um, and uh, some of my beta readers actually said, you know, they, they, they were quite surprised that all the, all the steps and all the, the elements that we have to consider when, when doing it. Um, and one of the sort of, I don't know where this comes from, but people seem to think that animation is a cheap um, uh, way of, of communicating, but it's not because as, as I mentioned, so 60 seconds takes four to six weeks to create and it's a team of people working on that. So it's quite, um, it's a high value, highly skilled um, uh, 
asset, really. Uh, but that's why we really encourage our clients to repurpose it in lots of different ways. Um, and otherwise, I'd say to anybody thinking about doing animation that it is a fantastic industry. It's, uh, you know, you always creating, always thinking. I think that the most amazing thing is that you never stop learning. And I think that if you're always learning, you'll never get bored. And I don't think we ever get bored because every day is so different. And, and that's what makes it really special. But I love it. Wouldn't change a thing. That's beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much, Christine. Um, you know, so there you go, guys. There you have it. That's uh, Christine from salamandra.uk. Um, thank you so much for your time and for coming on the Thanks, podcast. Carl. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's been fantastic. I had a great time. I can't wait to to get this out to uh, everybody. I'll put the the link to your website, your portfolios, thank um, you. and your book all in the YouTube and out to the uh, to the social media that we're connected with. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Paul. That's brilliant. No problem. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. No worries. Take care. Bye. Bye. Surf music.